So in total, I'm speaking to the camera by the way, so in total this is my second time canoeing and this will be James's first time canoeing. Um, luckily this thing is a huge canoe, it's 13 feet. I wouldn't be able to tell you the brand, uh, look in the description, I'll put it there. But the river, this is a San Gabriel River, but um, it's high because all the recent rains we had, so it's actually pretty easy getting on the water. And once we get to the camp, it'll be um, pretty easy getting up there too. Because normally there's about a three or four, three or four foot cut bank um, that you have to worry about. What do you think, man? Canoeing, huh? Ankle. <laughs> Is that scary? Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> So we brought um, some maps just because I'm not very familiar with canoeing and for whatever reason I get in completely lost uh, when I'm on the water. So I got some maps and we're going to canoe around San Gabriel River up to uh, Granger Lake. Maybe not all the way up there because it's a couple miles. Probably just going to stay in the area, just do some uh, scouts, walk around. Have a good trip. We pretty much brought all the gear. All right, so here's my setup. Uh, I went with a hammock this time. You guys have seen a million hammocks, so I'm not gonna go to uh, take too much time on it. So NOAA 12 by 12 diamond shaped tarp, cat cut. Um, this is my crinkle taffeta, taffeta, I'm not sure how they say it to be honest. Um, hammock, whoopee slings on either end with the whoopee sling in the center. If I, in case I want to change my, um, my lay. Down in here, um, I'm gonna have my surplus wool blanket as kind of like a pad. And then I've got the old military style, style mummy bag with the patrol bag. I believe it's a patrol bag. The lightweight summer um, bag, just in case. I wanted to show off my little setup that I got going on here. It's a modified six point. I used a little more than six points to get this thing down, but it's supposed to be one, two up front, and then three, four in the back corners, and then you fold the corners in of the square tarp. But I used some additional pegs just to stake the down the sides, just to keep it nice and hugged up against the ground. Got my bag and stuff over here, some gear, some clothes back there in the corner, and then I got my sleeping bag on top of a ground cloth and then i have inside the sleeping bag some additional blankets so that i know i'm going to be plenty warm there's plenty of room for me to lay out stretch out without being uh touching the sides over here we've got just kind of a quick lean to with a cheap tarp from walmart um, this is just going to be in case, well, when it rains, so we can both have somewhere just to hang out. And show you a quick little tip. 
rather than having to tie stuff, you can just run the cord at almost like a loop through it, put a toggle. You don't have to worry about any knots or anything like that. So it's just one continuous line that goes like that. Really, this is kind of just more of a canoe trip than it is anything else. Not gonna be a whole ton of bushcrafting. Kind of just gonna scout around on the, uh, on the river here. Probably early tomorrow. Maybe some later today, not sure yet. So it's about a four, well, three and a half mile hike to here if you follow the, the trail. But we canoed in, so it's only about a half mile canoe trip from the, uh, from the uh, boat launch, canoe launch. I'll show you where we're at. You know, for the area, it's actually kept pretty well. It's not like a national park kept, but it's, it's in pretty good condition for what it is. Pretty sad the, the state that people leave these campgrounds in. It's kind of ridiculous, actually. It's not very difficult to just pick up your trash. If you brought it in, it's just as hard and probably a little easier to bring it out. Social media. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Nothing? <laughs> oh, no, the screen. We're just gonna walk around, just scout out, just have some fun. Um, this is wildlife management area, it's all public. Uh, hunting season's over, so we shouldn't have to worry about that. And that's it, we're gonna head out and see what happens. Here, here, take this. Here, I'm gonna pass it to you. Through this hole. I'm too, I'm too fat. It's so dark and creepy in here. There's lots of room in here too. I wonder what this was at one point. Probably just a little shed for somebody. There's all these buckets here, might have been, well, I don't know, it could be any of those. Yeah. You can tell that this would no, be no place to be in the summer. Nests, wasps and hornet nests all over the place. I think we both own it together. What's wrong with that? Nothing, man. With all the money we get from our our used bobber sales, <laughs> I think we'll do pretty good for ourselves. Turn it around and buy. Ooh, that's, that's get a nice piece of land. That's such a good idea to check out. That's what we'll do. 
start our used bobber. Yeah. Sell, right? We'll just go to public lands and steal all the bobbers in the trees. We'll take that money, we'll buy a lake, and we'll charge people to fish in it. But then we'll have so many trees around that they get stuck, bobbers stuck all the time. And then we <laughs> We've got like a revolving line. It's infinite money, man. This is the island, but it's all... Uh, the, the map makes it look more, like, uh, defined. So I absolutely have to give credit where credit is due, and um, I saw this, it was one of Zachary Fowler's 30 day Texas challenge videos. I've seen other chairs similar to this, but I thought the way he did it was pretty smart. And uh, it's just a tripod with some cross supports and then the rest. I mean you, essentially you can make tons of stuff in this exact same fashion. Tables. Any flat surface, really. A bed. So, we're going to get more firewood, process it, get the fire going, and hope it doesn't rain. And what else? Eat. And here's our feast for the evening. Steaks, asparagus, onions, and mashed potatoes. Don't forget coffee. And coffee. Lots of coffee. Lots. Too much coffee. No such thing. Oh. Right. A lot. And this is Jesse, who I am blinding. Ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Bon appetit. Good morning. Uh, so, as I was laying down going to sleep last night, I realized that my wool um, pad, essentially, wasn't going to be enough. So let me show you what I was talking about. Um, so, last night I got a little chilly, and... I kind of rigged up my surplus blanket as an underquilt and I didn't do as well as I wanted it to so I stuffed um, the clothes that I brought with me underneath my back so what you saw me doing was cutting up a little bit of uh, grass here just to stuff under there in place of that now um, if you're doing like a ground bed or something you would definitely want you know ten times this amount but because it's going to be under me and it's not really going to be compressed, it's just going to be some air filler to hold the heat. Um, I really don't think I'll need that much. So we'll, so I think this will be fine.
But today we wanted to go somewhere different just to check out this, you know, check out the area. But the rains have made it almost impossible to land anywhere. Everything's flooded. Um, so we're just kind of, you know, paddling around trying to find something, you know, I guess video worthy. But kind of a lot of nothing. Um, we did see that cool boar shot that um, you did see earlier, and we we're pretty stoked about that. Uh, a big family of pigs running around. Uh, I was a little worried to get too close to them, because especially with Mama Pig being nearby. I think they're oyster men. Yeah. They're a little, a little worse for wear. I think they'll still be good. Those hogs came through, actually crossed the river over here early this morning, probably 10.30 or so. And uh, you're able to see that clip we're gonna kind of just follow their trail. Just kind of track them down. See where they went. The canoe trip we took was kind of um, uh, short because there was really nowhere to land with the water being so high. So we're just gonna find where they crossed at and ran and just follow it. See where it takes us. I've been out here before hog hunting with a friend. And I kind of know where they hang out, and we're gonna be heading that way shortly. But there's a tree line on the far side of the field that um, I think that that's where they were probably heading. They probably just kept running. The actual, you know, to be fair, they were slowing down before, before they were um, out of sight. You know, they're pigs. Show you this. So you can barely make it out there. That is a small um, hog. And we saw probably 10 um, piglets. I don't I don't know what <laughs> what the name of a baby hog is. Call them bacon. So I'm gonna keep moving. Hogs are nasty, man. They're putting mud on them. They roll around in it. Dude, look at that. That track. Yeah. That is a huge hog. Just for comparison. My hand, and that's just the front end. Oh gosh, it's theirs now, huh? Yeah. Another one right there. Oh, some little, another fat one there. Yeah, that's not good. That sucks. Oh, dang, dude. <laughs> He's looking straight down. <laughs> 
knife pointed at yourself, bushcraft challenge. <laughs> well, I'll show you how to pet a skunk without getting sprayed. <laughs> it didn't up. work. Coming up on Texas Bushcraft, we'll show you how not to get sprayed. First thing you're going to want to do is stick your finger in his butt. <laughs> and plug the hole. <laughs> <laughs> The little skunk goes. <laughs> it's like <laughs> imploding. Again. Um, yeah, the uh, straw in the blanket definitely worked. It didn't get as cold last night as it did uh, the night before, so it's not a 100% uh, accurate test. But, I mean, as soon as I got laid down, my back was warm. Before, I laid down to 30, 40 minutes before... I guess the, the layers underneath me warmed up, but I mean almost immediately this time I laid down and I was warm. I slept through the whole night. I woke up once to fill the restroom. I'm going to get up and uh, we're going to start cooking and watch the sunrise. All right, so that's the end of the trip. Um, I don't have much battery left. Pretty much use a battery on everything that we have. Uh, it's a nice sunny day today. Unfortunately, it's our last day. I would like to have spent a day like this out here. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.
Staring into a GoPro eating cheese at Bushcraft Challenge. Day one. Why are you showing me this? I'm gonna finish back to the point and you try to do Challenge failed. Watch this. You ready? I've been staring into this GoPro for four days now eating Cheez-Its. <laughs> Same back. <laughs> Challenge. 